Greetings and welcome to the Dot P Pro Show. I am your primary anchor proud. With me is Cyphus, here to bring you all of the Dota 2 professional news you could ever desire, and more or less. Right. Cyphus, hi. Hi. Uh, right. How's it going? Uh, it's all right. Everything's everything's fine. Thanks for asking. Good. Good. Uh, how's it how's it going on your end? Uh, I caught up on uh, Dota Pit. I've got I got to watch the rest of the grand finals yesterday. Uh, I, it was I you know I spoiled it for myself obviously, but it was still yeah. really entertaining to watch. I didn't know the I or I couldn't recall off the top of my head uh, like the order that the the you know wins and losses went in. So the first three yeah. games were you know spoiler free yeah, for me. The outcome is still like yeah, still a mystery. Uh, although I'll say in the first game the or the first two games that EG won in that series, uh, it felt. It felt so over from like I'd say seven minutes in. Uh, yeah, man, they those yeah, no, were no disagreements. Ugh, those were some painful games to watch. But I mean, not that OG, you know, didn't do their thing. But I, I thought about you a lot while watching it, just because of all the lone druid picks and uh, everybody favoring um, everybody favoring as you call it the lonely druid, but all the casters call it the lone lone druid. And I like the lonely druid yeah, better. That's- that's uh that's dumb and uh and stupid <laughs> agreed agreed uh but yeah it was entertaining it's cool to see it, it it was interesting to see uh the different builds that everybody was trying with the lonely druid um yeah it, just to like it, it i guess it was kind of uh i'll say liberating in a way to see that even pros are still trying to figure certain things out about, uh, you know, about what's ideal or most efficient on a hero. Um, yeah. Because that was one of the, I mean, one of the major topics of discussion in both the Lone Druid games and arguably OG ran the stronger Lonely Druid build. Um, you know, it didn't carry them to victory, obviously, in game five, I want to say it was. But, um, you, you know, I mean, they the first the first run at it in game one where OG kind of won... I'd say convincingly. There's a little back and forth, but it was it was definitely OG's match uh, overall. But uh, it just prompted so much interesting discussion from the casters talking about, um, you know, yeah, you know, hey, RTZ does this when he d- goes on when he plays lonely. He does the lone druid, the lone lone druid, as they kept calling it. Um, yeah, you know, we see that we see this streamer do this, we see this pro do this, uh, and you know, yeah, maybe it's more efficient to go this item or to do this first. And it was it was all fascinating stuff. I won't say that I absorbed it because I'm definitely not a lone druid player. Sure. Um, obviously, I didn't because I can't give you any specific like item, uh, uh, you know, item choices that they were they were kind of debating. Yeah. But I, but it was still it was just cool to watch. And uh, you know, I I, I guess uh, we need to get the pros to contact you, right? And you'll set them straight on the lonely yeah, druid. Yes, so the um the the evolution of the way people have been playing that druid and pros has been like super interesting to me because I've been doing it. If you've been following, I've been doing it for probably I probably have like a solid month, of maybe about forty games of it before uh, maybe maybe more like thirty. Uh, like games of just straight playing it before it started showing up in pros. So like I kind of went through this process of like figuring out what was efficient and what wasn't. Um, and I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm sort of watching pros do the same thing. They don't, but like they're, they're evolving more or less kind of in line with my thought processes. Uh, but they I mean, aside from the fact that they don't like uh, home of the dominator for the most part that I can tell. Um, but like I, I saw um, recently, uh, Arteezy was going um, Maelstrom into Deso, which is like, or if you look at my video from a while ago, where I was going like double phase, Dom, Maelstrom, Deso, then then Lance. Um, I was like, in the video, I was like, this is really good, but it sucks. I love <laughs> Deso and I love Maelstrom, but it makes no sense to go a Maelstrom and a Deso. And now I just go either straight maelstrom or straight deso yeah um so like i feel like in in time and it'll it, it also depends because i play it mid um because i don't get to play safely in much of my pubs and most of them play it safe lane and when i have played it safe lane i have actually liked their builds of um of getting like the dragon lance uh like really early like dragon lance then maelstrom um so it's been kind of eye-opening to like uh like i still definitely like my build more more than more than like most other ones but like i'm i'm uh I'm a, I'm a lot more okay with some of the stuff that i've been seeing yeah um 
Yeah, it's it, it's it's cool because especially like one of these new things, like people are learning how to play this like day of. Like I see Druid still going like Aquila, and I think that's just the worst item possible to get on that hero. Um, but like I don't, that that may die out soon, or that may just like never die out because it's just standard. Because uh, like when you when you start playing a new hero at a tournament that you're not used to, um, you don't re you don't have time to like play test and theory craft. Like all you know is okay. This hero played this way, has won this tournament. I'm going to do, like, a minor variation of it. I'm not going to completely, like, change up my build just, right. like, in, in the middle of this tournament that I have never tested. I'm going to see what works, and I might put my own little spin on it, but I'm mostly just going to use the standard. And then people who have no experience with the Druid, especially if you're playing in this way that's not bear-focused, you don't really need... You have a lot of people playing the Druid who aren't too used to, uh, or who aren't... There's not too much of like an entry uh, barrier. There's just like, oh, okay, I play. I just play like a hero, but also I have this bear thing that I kind of slightly have to worry about, as opposed to like bear focus druid, where it's this like whole micro thing. Um, so you have like a lot of people doing a completely new hero, trying to figure out how to play a completely like in a completely new way, and like everything is just changing every day, and it's it's super cool to watch because I feel like I'm a little bit ahead of like, or at least I've. I'm ahead on having the experiences. They go different ways with it, but like I have encountered these issues and then I've solved it my way. So it's really cool to see how like other people and specifically people who are like better at Dota in general, like solve the issue from a non like completely inside the lone druid perspective way. Yeah. Like the Aquila, I'm just, I, the Aquila. Oh, Aquila. <laughs> uh, so on a uh, completely unrelated note. On a non druid note. Yes, on a non druid note. Uh, I just I was gonna bring up uh, the Sunday practice that we did. Uh, I had a blast, and uh, I, I like your uh, I like your captaining style. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You. I, uh, I I noticed that I captain a lot better, or maybe not not a lot better, but I I definitely do a lot more of it. Like the worse my teammates are, which is why it's like really good that I'm always on a team with Ursinity because I can always like. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have you noticed he just didn't talk? He just he's not a talker. Is I, he? I'm not either. I, I I feel like I was relatively quiet other than yeah, you know, you, maybe pretty quiet too. I, I, I think I a couple of times I like, communicated like I'll communicate what I, I feel like I guess I need to in those types of settings. You know, like yeah. where where was the ward? Show me again. Or uh, you know, that you yeah. wanted me to D ward or I've got two smokes on me. Uh let me know when we want to use them. Uh, okay, uh, I love yeah. that our, our first smoke that we did, like, so predictably was five people sitting together, and then eventually someone said, okay, who has the smoke? And then yeah. the answer, <laughs> deafening silence. Like, oh, um, oh, okay. <laughs> my my favorite moment of the whole thing was uh, the debate over whether or not Grouty should get Greaves, um, and uh, you telling him, yes, you should get Greaves, and him saying, but wouldn't it be more ideal to grab whatever item and uh, your prompt response of no it's not and we'll talk about it after the game <laughs> yeah yeah I, I definitely came off a little because like rowdy wanted to get into a discussion i'm like i am playing a dota 2 match right now and i and i i very easily could have been totally wrong about that like there are pretty fine judgment calls either way um this is especially it's like how deep into the item was i just think that like when you're playing a dota game like that and if i did, if that was the wrong call like i don't really have the luxury if, if we're trying to, like, actually, like, be very, like, consistent, keep our tempo up, to be like, well, maybe I was wrong about that one. But, like, I just got to be like, nope, do it. We'll talk about it after. Yeah. Um, and then we did. We had a fine conversation about it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, you, you, you probably could have, like, finished the item. I was probably, like, wrong about that. So, like, you know, good no, knowledge I... for next time. But also, I mean, Greaves is so fucking good. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, you know I, it, it all made sense to me. I didn't care. I just, I, I I definitely appreciated the uh, the prompt. Uh, we'll deal with it later. Response. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I definitely had had a lot of fun, and I felt very captainy, which is like I've I've said for a while. Like as far as playing competitive Dota, I feel way more like I'm like the role that I play is captain more than I play carry. Um, I'm way better at captaining than I am at than I am at carrying. Not to say that I'm like not, but like you know, my as far as like where my MMR points are at, you know, like I'm more good at carry than the other positions. But like at least with the stacks I've played in, like I'm more interested in like doing the captaining than I am specifically hitting the creeps. It just so happens that I'm you know I have to play Dota when I'm playing Dota, so I play carry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so should we talk about Star Ladder and uh, how all the open yeah. calls and everything are shaping up? 
Yeah, let's get into that. The Star Series has actually been super interesting, especially because this is one of those tournaments where you don't have, like, every team and their fucking dog and their mother and their B team uh, is, is, like, playing in it, except for China. For China, it's, like, everybody in the club. Like, everybody in the club playing in this fucking qualifier. Yeah. Um, but for, like, uh, NA, like, EG isn't going, OG isn't going. Um, not that OG is NA, but, you know, for the, the, the like, Western teams. Um I feel like there's like one or two. It's like, oh yeah, I don't think VP is going. Um, yes, yeah, so like some of the other like top teams aren't really going. But I mean, Wings is going to be there. DC is trying to get in. Um, Ad Finum, I'm not sure if you'd call them a top team, but uh, they're trying to get in. Uh, so a lot of like really interesting, notable teams are happening here, which is yeah. uh, I always like to see. So I, I say we take it uh, like this. I think we go through. <clears throat> so we we know that there are two direct invites. Uh, one of those is going to Wings Gaming, and the other is still TBD. They've uh, finished off the open qualifiers for Europe. Uh, Team Liquid took that. So we're going to see some Matumba and uh, Miracle Action, Kuroki, and those guys uh, heading into yep. this tournament for sure. God. Uh, but there is another Europe qualifier still going. Uh, they're one of the Ch- or the two Chinese qualifiers have both finished up with uh, Team VGJ. What are what, who are these guys? So I, I know aggressive on it, but is in my mind like the VGA team. Um, VG has like VG Gaming potential and all that stuff. Right. Um, but a while ago, I think it was last year. Um, so FY is kind of like their um. Uh, their kind of poster child or whatever. Uh, I think I think he actually you actually his name is actually Phi, um, but he's more or less like their prodigal son. There was the time uh, around TI four and then a little bit after that, um, going into like the, the TI five year and all that. That um, like they they did absurdly well. Like RTK was captaining and uh, they got second at TI with like off of like one strat, um, and then they sort of. Like they they lost um, they lost ROTK and then FY uh, stepped up to captain and he, he did very well but and, and their team did amazing that was when uh, they had ISIS ISIS their off laner and uh, Black as their carry and then eventually they just didn't like having a non Chinese speaker in Black on the team so they right. kicked him for for I do how, remember that and the team just yeah they, they just didn't really like continue on that well but um Phi in uh in china is known as uh, the prince to juxtapose uh burning as the emperor um so they kind of have this like little rivalry going on when it was like burning on dk and and uh the uh who was it uh Phi on Phi on vg um so they have this little like dichotomy going and so at least there is some kind of like history to Phi being extremely well respected um, and thought to be kind of like the next bringer of like, you know, a great era of Chinese Dota. Uh, but since taking over the captain position, he's had some kind of like confidence issues uh, and some issues just kind of like bringing people together and just not not exactly living up to uh, to expectations. Um, when, when I first started getting like really into pro Dota 2, it was Fi and Fen. I would just like be watching like little streams or hearing that like a Chinese match was going and people would be saying, oh man, Fi and Fen are the best support duo ever. And it's like a support duo. That sounds cool. And this is like right <laughs> after TI3 yeah. when they first started, when VG first started like doing well. Um, so they kind of stuck out to me as the first, um, the first duo that skill was more defined on how well they work together and not how well they are individually. Fi is obviously one of the most skilled supports in the world. Fenrir, not that incredible, but when you put them together, you get a performance like where they get second at um, at TI4 against, uh, you know, when Vichy, or when, uh, when like Newbie and EG and DK and those teams are all around, they still do that well. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited uh, that they're kind of like back together. So it's basically that the roster from TI4 that totally outperformed expectations. Uh, although the TI4 meta was basically defined by the way Vichy just pushed every fucking game. Uh, the fact of the matter is that they basically figured out the strat. Uh, it's just that Newbie was a better team. They had uh, Silar as their safeling carry, who mostly played like oh sorry either morphling or um or this uh, uh this safe lane profit thing that they started doing and it, he would just go like fast orchid and they would just push with trees and then an orchid on profit um but they were mostly like limited to that one strat and that kind of really bit them in the ass because it's hard to win a best of five when the enemy team figures out you've got really one strat and rtk kind of uh, crumbled in terms of drafting and it was very very sad thing but uh they're they're back now they have aggressive instead of um 
instead of Silar. I'm hoping there's a little better synergy between the players there. It seemed like there were some issues back in, in TI4 trying to get that all together. So obviously ROTK, Fi, and Fenrir, if they're willing to play together again, they definitely have at the very least reconciled their differences. I, I guess for the most part, I would have to say they definitely think that they... Um, Think that they'll do well together if they're you know reviving this bond uh i'd be a little worried if, if it was something like oh they did well and then they didn't so they're just looking to like reclaim form former glory just by remaking a team but I've, i have a lot of confidence in them rotk is like the throwiest most questionable captain <laughs> that's ever lived but he's also my favorite dota 2 player so uh i'm I, all, all, all the luck in the world to them rotk is so fantastic and then we got this dude freeze playing mid for them as opposed to super yeah he's the only uh, name super... i didn't really recognize on that roster list i, I mean obviously yeah. we've talked a lot about aggressive and and you know how much he stands out to everybody after uh, ti5 but yeah freeze i i know literally nothing about freeze yeah so i i really don't either outside of the play i've seen him I and mean, he's been in a couple e home b teams um if you look at like on, on liquipedia he's uh his player profile picture is still you know him in an esports jersey or not e- not esports uh an e-home jersey but it is an esports uh, but, jersey <laughs> yeah, it is, that is also the true uh yeah so i think he's just another it, it seems like the the way to have a successful team right now is pick up a like star un- like somewhat untested uh mid player and although of course this person has been on bt so he's somewhat tested but you know it's, it's similar to like SCCC or S Triple C, however you want to say say his name. Uh, Top tier mid player, didn't really see him internationally before this before this season um, or, or last season, I guess. Um, and that's something that you know, like we picked up Miracle, uh, Anna. We got recently um, Sumail from basically the pub scene. That was the in-house scene, but you know whatever. Um, there seems to be there's definitely a huge trend of just you want a good mid player find them they're not just like just take them out of the pubs and put them in pros and see what happens and uh, being on like one of these b teams or whatever i feel like is kind of the chinese equivalent they just okay this person's doing fine on the b teams let's just yank them up put them in like a perfect situation and see how they perform it worked for s triple c and it looks like it's working for freeze because this this team is doing great they've got this like uh this nice like bedrock of um bedrock of like talent and experience out of rotk they have like the uh the dynamic uh duo of fi and fenrir like ma- making sure that the game works the way they want it to they've got aggressive as this like incredible aggression player um and then they have like pub star or, or uh you know like rising star freeze uh just to kind of round it out like it's a pretty it's a pretty rote method for success for a, uh for almost any um professional team that we've seen like really work well in the past I don't know. I want to say like year, year and a half outside of Adfinum, which was just pure friendship, dedication, and love. Yeah, I, they. I mean, they rose up through. I, I guess we ought to mention here that the other Chinese qualifier from there was IG Vitality. Um, but yeah. uh, Team VGJ did. I mean, the, the it was not a, an easy lineup uh, in that Chinese qualifier. <clears throat> they beat out C Deck. They beat out Invictus. They beat out LGD. They beat out Vici Gaming, uh, sister team uh, VG Potential, uh, E Home. I mean, there you know the that the lineup in that Chinese qualifier features a lot of names, a lot of teams that people know yeah. and know for a reason. Uh, yeah, so. it's it's an incredible amount of players, honestly. Uh, yeah, they beat uh, like the thirty-two. Uh, I think it's the current thirty-two E-home teams. Roster. Sorry, say again. Thirty-two teams in all in that Chinese qualifier. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, like they, they beat out the E home roster, Siler, Old Chicken, Eleven, Lanham, Garter. Like that's not that's a that's a team that was at some point uh, like those players could easily be considered the top team in the world. That's you know at some point in their in their careers and all that sort of thing. Um, so it's it's super 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 cool that they're doing this well. Um, oh no, that was uh, IG Vitality um, beat out uh, um, that that E home squad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had it. Yeah, IJ had Vitality to be that Diddy, that Diddy home squad. But yeah, still, super, super difficult. Um, super difficult qualifier. Uh, basically, any, almost all of the top teams in China were, were there outside of Wings, of course. Um, Burning's IG team. Um, yeah, the, the Lanham, Silar squad. 
Uh, and I, I'm glad to see IG Vitality doing well, because uh, that's the team that has dogfights on it, and I love that there is a pro player named Dogfights. <laughs> I, I was going to... the coolest name. I, I was going to ask you about IG Vitality, because they... <clears throat> so, th- I don't know if everybody out there knows how the Chinese qualifiers operated, but just to kind of cover it briefly, they did a they did a group stage. Everybody seated into two brackets, um, and then those two brackets played, and the winner of each of the brackets went on to move. Uh, VGJ uh, went 2-0 against C-Deck in the semifinals to qualify. And IG Vitality actually went 2-1 against Invictus Gaming, the, the premier team from IG. Um, I, I mean, is that kind of a surprise to people that... I mean, I, I guess I my assumption would have been that your star lineup would have been on, you know, IG proper, Right. Yeah, so this has changed up a lot, I think. Um, so, basically, the the Ch- the Chinese scene, as far as which team is their like number one team and all that business, uh, that kind of a lot depends on player ego and notoriety, not necessarily the skill. Like okay. when um when Phi left uh when Phi left VG last year to not not I wouldn't say left VG, but Phi created a different squad. He created, um, I think, his own uh, VG Reborn, I think is what it was called. And it was just, like, him plus uh, DDC and a bunch of other, um, like, maybe B-team Chinese players. And they did they did really well. Uh, but that was just Phi wanted to get away from uh, all these, like, established players and just, like, have a clean slate on a new team and try to, you know, like, do the whole find a bunch of, like, unknowns that are good and, and take it from there, like, clean slate kind of deal. Um, and a lot of these teams are pretty similar. Like you, uh, a, a top team, kind of how like uh, when Navi rebanded, they basically just kicked everyone and then reinvited everyone except for uh, Havost. And it's it's kind of similar to that. Only instead of doing it that way, it's more like one person wanted to just leave and, and make a different team. So that's how they've been dealing about with with that for the most part. Like uh, when Phi left. They had like burning and ROTK and shit on on the same team, and they were performing way way worse. Like Phi is definitely you know the star player out of out of VG and the one who's making everything happen. But he wanted a new team, so they weren't just gonna like you know kick burning off the main squad, quote unquote. Uh, they were just gonna like give Phi his own team, and then whatever happens happens. And uh, it's pretty much happening like across the board is these like new reform teams that aren't just a bunch of old pros are doing well. So whoever has the inclination to do that will leave the main team and then uh, make their own little like side off brand do well. And that's why we have VGJ doing better than VG now is because Phi wanted to make his own thing. And that's where everyone went to. And IG Vitality is no, I wouldn't say entirely similar to that, but IG Vitality has started doing like really, really well over the past couple years. They've changed out some players, but as far as like Chinese B teams to expect to see at the end of a qualifier, it was always like IG Vitality, um, and then like you, you know, it used to be also Wings, but now they're like absurdly good. Uh, so it's it's not too surprising to see IG Vitality continue to grow, whereas the kind of uh, standard established teams that have been in the limelight for so long, the players that they typically pick up are kind of like at the end of their, uh, like they're not going to get that much better, right? Um, right. These like new blood teams are the ones that are going to be rising. Cool. Um, you want to, let's stick with maybe uh, SEA for a little bit. All right, let's move over to SEA and stick with the Eastern teams for a bit, that is. Uh, so do that. TNC Pro Team uh, still in first place, or managed to qualify. They took first in the SEA qualifier. Um, they yep. beat out Team Faceless, Warriors Gaming Unity, um, Mineski's GG Network, Execration, Fnatic. Um, Execration and Fnatic didn't perform very well at uh, in the round robin. Uh, not very well at all. I think they were, uh, yeah, sixth and seventh. Uh, they performed behind a couple of, uh, n- well, I guess lesser known teams. I won't say no name teams. Uh, and fa- Team Faceless, I know, is a personal favorite of yours, and they just barely missed the qualifier. Yeah, they, it looks like they looks like they had a game taken off of them by execration the, on January twenty fifth. That was basically the reason they are not uh, the SEA qualifiers. That that had to be yeah, tough. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little rough for them, but I'm glad to see TNC doing well because they got um, they got uh, Raven and was it Raven and Cuckoo? They got they got back from uh, Fnatic. I think it was. Um, let's see. 
I can confirm that they're on the roster. I don't know if they were on Fnatic yeah. beforehand. No, it's uh, Raven and... Was it just Raven? And the, yeah, Raven and then they pick, picked up Tim's. Either way, they got they got people back from... Um... Okay, no, it was, it was uh, Raven and Sam H? Man, I, I don't know. Either way, they're doing well now. Um, okay, no, it's, it's just Raven that they got back. Just Raven. Uh, AO was the one that... Uh, or AU was the one that left. But then, yeah, so they got Raven back and now they're doing well. Um, so it's cool, like, TNC uh, did well at TI, and uh, now they're kind of, like, back together. Uh, they're bit, a little bit reformed, but for the most part, it's the uh, same kind of, like, core cast of members. So they're doing really, really well again, which is great. Um, it's nice to see a kind of, like, homegrown uh, SEA team doing doing well, like, coming out of the amateurs in, instead of, uh, like, I love Fnatic to death, don't get me wrong. But uh, it, it is nice to see that. Some team that's just oh yeah TNC not uh, someone with like you know fanatic backing them and all that is able to like push through and make it there. Yeah. I'm not too surprised Execration didn't do well at all. They had um, they had a bed kind of like sniped from them to join Team Onyx and NA, uh, who is also not doing that well. So uh, Execration lose a bed, lose your Meepo player, uh, you kind of struggle. Yeah, uh, does it hurt you a little bit that uh, Faceless didn't do as well as uh, I mean because they've they've been performing exceptionally well of late, uh, but yeah. not, obviously not not well enough to make the qualifier. Is that that hurt you a little bit inside? No, it's it's all right. I mean, there's only one qualifier spot, right? And that these are like all the top SEA teams. Yeah, uh, and I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with them being like second best by one point uh in you know a game or two and they, they went to a tournament recently where they got third so i don't think they're gonna disband after this yeah yeah um, but yeah I'm, I'm just i'm just more happy for uh, tnc i know Fnatic wasn't exactly expecting to get through i want Fnatic to do well i want mushi to be a happy boy um but you know he is they've like reformed the band uh, and it's gonna take some time for them to get it all together so you know stay strong Fnatic. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to start heading west a little bit over in the European qualifier. Uh, they are having, they're going to be qualifying two teams. We still have some matches. If you're listening to this, uh, on Wednesday, February 1st, you can ch- uh, catch a Navi C9 match, uh, and a secret ad finum match. And tomorrow, February 2nd, uh, you can see secret play Vega and then ad finum, uh, play Alliance. Um, Ad Finum and Secret are basically Ad Finum, Secret, and Cloud Nine are the three teams that are kind of competing for that second position. There, um, they're yeah. all sitting at about eight points each. Uh, Liquid has definitely qualified. They're in it. They're for sure fifteen points. They they kind of solidified their victory already. Um, so yeah. the probably the matches to watch there. Uh, I'm I'm guessing Cloud Nine is so Navi. I, I, I'm trying to look at the points here and see. So I think if they win, if Navi took both of those, they'd get three points. I'd put them at 10. And if Secret did, eh, that'd be 10. There, There is a potential, I think, for a tie if all of the matches get split. So I guess Navi is kind of still in it. Uh, and then I guess they'd have to go to some form yeah. of a tiebreaker. Uh, but if Navi manages yeah, to take that likely. A, a game off of Cloud9, basically that's going to kill Cloud9's a shot at uh at taking the qualifier um is secret and ad is probably more the match to watch because both are in are on equal footing and both have a match the following yeah. day so that's that's gonna decide it honestly is the secret ad Finum match you think so yeah i mean if they split one one then like cloud nine and uh navi have a chance but if either one of them two owes it like it's it's them they they like they'll win yeah uh Although I get, yeah, I get, yeah, you're right. Because uh, I put them at 11, and even if they lost both of those, could either of those teams, let's see, Cloud9, Cloud9 could still tie it if they 2 0 Navi. Uh, add Finum if they go 11, and Secret gets 2 0 by Vega, which seems unlikely. Yeah, you're right. That's probably, yeah. the, that's probably going to be you've it. Got matches, if you've got matches against a team that's already out of it at this point, like you're your chances go up pretty well. And yeah. Adfinum is against Alliance and Secret is against Vega. And I don't feel like either of them are going to have issues getting like a 2-0 or at least a 1-1 with that. So I think it's mostly just going to come down to Secret and Adfinum hitting each other. Unless they go 1-1 and then they all lose to Vega and Alliance, then I think C9 and Navi don't have a great chance. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the match to watch. Uh, I, I know I've seen Adfinum play. I mean, I, I do we need to talk about Secret? <laughs> you know, 
uh, I feel like we, I feel like everybody knows about Secret at this point. But Ad Finum is maybe the team I, I, I would say I know the least about in that in that lineup of the the three competitors there. Um, how how have they been performing recently? I feel like they've been. I feel like my recollection is that they've performed well of late, uh, but I can't point to any specifics. Yeah, they're they're doing like decently. I'm not entirely wowed by them but that's kind of the team itself like they don't have oh. any of these amazing top tier players here's why they took second just, at the boston major that's why i remember them <laughs> yeah yeah that, that yeah, would do it yeah so do it, my, my my fear for them has just been that that's going to be like a one and done kind of thing um but they've been they've been doing okay a lot of their success comes down through like kind of teamwork and abusing uh their their opponents and just like I don't know, just like playing in a way that makes their opponents look bad. Like they're not an incredibly amazing team as much as I love them to death. Like they're not they're not that great and like the level of Dota that they play is definitely not top tier. Um but the way that they play, I feel like just gets their enemies so off balance that they can win through it anyways. So like their their style is just like really good and they way, the way that they play together is just really good and they find all these like opportunities that just should not exist. Um, but there's just something about them that like gets them these wins, these really good games. It's really cool. They have like a really sweet X factor going on with them. Um, but I feel like when a patch is un is like unfinished um, and the meta is not entirely figured out, that may be a lot less of an advantage because everyone is finding opportunities that kind of shouldn't exist. Um, and that's not too too bad because even though this map is totally different, uh, the the game plays fairly similarly to how it did last patch, so they're they're still good. I just I feel like the kind of like perfect storm that made them get second at last uh, major doesn't exist now, and I'm really afraid that their like individual skill is not going to like catch up to to match that. But for now, it seems like they're doing well, and I'm just going to be kind of undecided about about how good they are. But I uh, I really hope that they I really hope that they keep doing uh, really well and that they beat Secret. It's really going to be like this match against Secret is what's going to kind of decide for me whether or not I think they're super good. Like they went one wood they went one one against Liquid, uh, which was like pretty solid. Uh, I mean, Li- Liquid is definitely really good. Liquid is probably the team that I would say has the most potential to be a like tier one stomp the world team. They just need to figure out how the fuck to play between um miracle and uh, miracle and matumba man because man like it is not easy to balance that farm like when uh, artesi and sumail first were on the same team like they they were so good it's just how the hell do you play those two players together and miracle matumba man is like even worse of an issue because they're much more defined in their specific roles like they had artesi transitioning to carry and sumail you know plays like a, a wide kind of variety here as they both you know are pretty like greedy cores or whatever but uh Liquid and or uh, uh, Miracle and Matumba Man, like they they both they both are the star player, and it's very difficult. Like you you don't want to have an Artesian and a Sumail, you want a Fear and a, and a Sumail. Um, so that's it's just like taking a long time for them to kind of kind of balance their stuff out. But it seems like the new addition of uh, GH God to uh, kind of like help them get that blank slate going on, so that they can like start from the ground up to figure out how they want to distribute their farm and how they want to play with their team has been helping out. Uh, uh, like a ton all right so uh that team secret ad finum match starts tomorrow at 2 30 p.m eastern so that'd be uh 12 or 11 30 pacific uh so if you're out there and you want to keep an eye if you want to watch a match that's gonna you know at least decide the fate of a team heading into a, a fairly major tournament uh that's probably fate the match the world, to, even. Yeah, yeah the fate of the world rests in the hands of team secret and ad finum who who, who, who would you if you had to make a prediction, who who you're predicting is going to walk away from that, the winner? A uh, secret. I feel like they have the most potential. Like, every match that they play, I feel like they can get better off of. They have, like, ridiculously underperformed in some of their uh, matches. Like, they lost to, like, Horde, like, the Ake stack. Like, you shouldn't lose to Ake stack. Like, that's... You shouldn't you shouldn't drop a game to Ake stack if you're fucking, like, you know, the puppy team where he's, like, sniping top Koreans and fucking like kezu and shit um but the team does have the most potential to be like really really good i feel um but they have been like pretty grossly underperforming this tournament in my opinion um but so do you think i I, I, i'm still my money is on secret do you think a split is possible i think it's it's definitely it's definitely possible like i I feel like they're both kind of inconsistent like if ad finim or i guess has a game maybe the better question there is do you think a split is likely Mm, I don't know. It's tough. I 
I want to say yes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put that down for a yeah. Like, they both have had a decent amount of splits. Um, so they're, they're definitely, like, both are able uh, to go one one in a tournament. It's not like one game sets the entire tone for them and they just take it from there. Um, so at least from, like, a statistical standpoint, it wouldn't be crazy if a split were to occur. And as far as the two teams together, I feel like they're both inconsistent enough and good enough to, like, have these flashes of glory and then just kind of, like... The underperform the next game and i have a like i really do have a feeling that that's like what's going to happen but i definitely do feel like one of them is going to go through even if they do split okay well that's the match to keep an eye on then folks you heard it from proud himself i'm going to move us uh a little bit further west to let's be honest what really matters to fans of this podcast the NA yep. Dota scene. Um, the worst scene in the fucking world. <laughs> so uh, a lot of the play has kind of already been decided. Uh, at this point, there are two teams in the running. Team NP is looking like they might be. They might have cinched it. Uh, they've got 16 points. Uh, they took uh, they took f- uh, five of the round robin matches. Only spl- or they took. They played in six round robin matches. They split only one. They won the other five. Uh, Right behind them is DC, who has also played in six round robins. They took four, split two. Uh, So they're two points behind NP at this point. Uh, They have a match tomorrow, uh, February 1st. Uh, I think it starts about a half hour before that uh, Team Secret uh, Ad Finum match. And they are playing uh, Team Freedom, who has been underperforming. So it looks like they'll take a 2 0 there. Um, the, yep. the match after, so, and then February 2nd, there's a match between Complexity and T- NP. Complexity didn't do terribly in the round robin. They got nine points. Uh, they participated in five uh, round robins. Actually, they've got a match going as we record this. Uh, between Dialcom, so it's possible that you know they go two zero there, pick up another three points, and get twelve. Uh, I mean, they, but they they can't get within striking distance of first place against NP. Yeah, that, no, it's all between NP and DC right now, and it's yeah, but it's that, just going to come down down to but, like if if DC two zero's team freedom, then NP needs to two zero complexity. If DC one one's team freedom, then NP can lose both their games, and it won't matter. Yeah, right. So uh, that that's going to be an interesting match to check out for sure. Uh, I, I suspect, I, I honestly, I don't think it's going to be that interesting of a match. I think it's going to come down to uh, Complexity and uh, the NP match. I, I think Complexity has to, at this point, it looks like they probably have to take both games off NP uh, for that, for basically for NP to, to not solidify this their their spot in the qualifier. Well, no. If they go one one, it'll be a tie because so MP would get gets one point for a, for a split. Oh, and you're right. DC would get three points for the because this is the stupid S system that's in every amateur tournament I've ever played. <laughs> where you get two points or three points for going two zero because somehow the, that win counted for more. And yeah, yeah. So, so then they would M- need a two zero complexity. Yeah, they need a two zero complexity to cinch it. A one one split with complexity means that they. Uh, basically have to uh uh do the tiebreaker whatever that whatever the, that you know scenario is yeah it's probably just play best of three or something yeah uh so which is cool because they uh they, they played each other at first at np and dc and they went one one so it's good stuff yeah i i, I look forward to seeing the complexity np match because the complexity didn't do terribly i mean the the problem was that they ended up splitting too many series uh, they split one with Onyx. They split one with DC. Uh, they split one with split Doo-Wop, one with <laughs> which, which I don't even know who school. Doo-Wop is. Uh, any idea who Doo-Wop it's, is? Uh, sneaking stack with uh, UR, 747, Beer U, and Clairvoyance. Yeah, it's, uh, and that means nothing to me. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but Okay, Yuar is Sumail's, Sumail's brother. Oh, right. King is, a, is an old school... Very questionable uh, American pro uh, played around like TI three. He he was in he was in TI. Beer U was the uh, the captain of um, DC's first iteration, where they were like, okay, everyone's trying out these like 
pub star mid players. Let's try out a pub star captain to lead us. And they're like, that didn't work at all. Uh, and clairvoyance is a kind of like coach analyst guy who's been around the scene for a long time. And I think he's uh, he's got decent enough MMR. Yeah, he's like almost 7K. Uh, so he's, he's pretty good. And he's been like a support that's been, you know, running around between like doing more administrative and like coaching stuff and, and uh, playing on kind of tier two, tier three teams. So uh, he's, uh, you know, team team might do well. BYU or 747 rather was the, uh, the mid four FDL. And their last um, triumphant iteration. So, I mean, they're, they're all fine players, but it's kind of like a uh, stack of players who that we we kind of have tried before, so it would be a little surprising if they came out and did really well. Right. And they don't, I mean, you know, not to put them down or anything, but they don't stand a chance in this uh, particular series, like we mentioned. Uh, it's all NP and DC. So, uh, I, I think it's safe to say that DC is going to 2-0 Team, Fort- or Team Fortress, <laughs> Team Freedom, uh wh- how about complexity np how do you see that match going um it's np so i think that there's like a 40 percent chance there's just this like wild throw and it goes to a split um i think it's going to be a split and i think we're going to have like a best of three between the two of them or whatever the tiebreaker is to to figure out which one of them goes so uh, check out that, uh, you know, if you guys want to keep an eye on what's going on with NA Dota, this is an easy match to check. It's just uh, to keep an eye on. It's just two games. Uh, that's February 2nd, so Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can tune in to uh, check out that Complexity MP match and see if uh, the fate, see what the fate of DC will be and the fate of NP. So, uh, and then we covered all the invites. I, I think that's a pretty decent summation of Star Ladder. Or what's going yeah, on thus far? I'd, uh, I'd say so. As far as like heroes picks and any of the trends going on, uh, it's pretty much all the same stuff. Rubik is still kind of like the top support. If you need a support, you pick Rubik. Um, Slaughter Life Stealer is still top tier. Juggernaut Luna are um, Juggernaut Luna are like the other carries besides Life Stealer. Uh, Luna probably the most picked, but she just gets banned. Um, and yeah, people are still playing, still playing uh, Shadow Demon. Weaver is still coming out a ton. As a kind of the like, f- I, I want to say sort of like fourth ranked carry, although he gets played in like a lot of different ways. Um, and then I mean, like Shadow Fiend is definitely coming up as one of the best mids to play. Uh, that, that was kind of uh, it's kind of known that that was the case slash going to become the case. But uh, as as these games go on, he further solidifies himself as the most picked mid, maybe not the most uh, contested. Um, but uh, not the most banned, not the most most feared, but the most uh, un- the most common to see, you know, get out there. Um, yeah, so that's uh, these p- picks not not entirely different from what we were seeing. Um, yeah, as, as far as like most banned stuff, Slaughter Underlord still terrifying. Uh, definitely the best heroes going around right now. Underlord and uh, Slaughter is up there with the uh, Druid and Shadow Demon Luna. Uh, still kind of. Uh, Still definitely feared pretty heavily, and interesting enough, Meepo with 81 bans. So if you've got a Meepo player, like people just have no interest in playing against Meepo right now. So uh, in terms of things that. to look forward to getting nerfed, <laughs> uh, Me- Meepo's there. So uh, another thing I wanted to ask you is uh, do, uh, we I, I couldn't find anything when we were prepping for this about when the main event was going to occur. Is that is that common with Star Ladder? Do they... February 23rd or something like that? I think. Oh okay okay. Um, let's see, main event. Yeah, I couldn't see. I uh, Liquipedia had it at a TBD, and uh, I couldn't, on Star Ladder's actual page for Star Series Season 3, I, I couldn't locate yeah, anything. Yeah, so it. at, uh, so yeah, Star, Star Ladder iLeague Star Season, season 3, uh, main event start date is uh, February 23rd, end date uh, February 26th. 6th. 6th. Okay. 6th. All right. Fair enough. Uh, it, w- do we know of any major tournaments upcoming after that? Um, nothing I'm too too aware of. We probably have the um, the major qualifiers coming up. I want to say there may be like one tournament before that happens. Uh, let me check Wikipedia. There, there may be one other thing like actually upcoming. Uh, no, it's really just Star Series, and I think since there is a bit of a lull, organizers may be aware of when um, of when the uh, the major qualifiers are coming, so that's why nothing is kind of like planned for that. But also, that's uh, you know the better part of a month away. Still, we're not even at well. We will be in February by the time people listen to this. But uh, the, the you know once this happens, 
the next tournament isn't still isn't for 23 days so it's not like we're going to hear about another tournament happening like two months in advance esports attention spans are not that high yeah fair enough all right well hell i i uh, i guess i have nothing else uh well yeah. there's uh there's uh escape gaming getting picked up by ninjas in pajamas aka old fanatic plus uh Sindarin and uh Koifa. oh i i had not heard anything about that please educate me sir please educate me yeah so um let's see so who 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 got lost off escape it was um yapsor i think and where's where's old ass escape where's that is this guys i want to see where escape's at i want to like make sure i don't get this get, i don't get this wrong i think they lost like two yeah two players so kezu went to secret and yapsor went to uh bears so they lost their four and their three um and they ended up getting uh some old uh fanatic eu players so they got trixie who um better known as I want to say almost like the most questionable offlaner ever, but in terms of offlaners, there is an absurd amount of questionable offlaners. Not that there's anything wrong with them, it's just you would have these games where Trixie would do like absurdly well, and then ones where he's just inexplicably like the most feed oriented thing that has ever happened. Um I don't exactly know how to parse him. But he was um, most notably sense fanatic. He was the kind of like leader in, I almost want to just say chaperone, of um, four ASC, a.k.a. four anchors plus sea captain, a.k.a. the only reason you know who Jerex and Matumba Man are, unless you follow Q-Pad Red Pandas with Jerex. Uh, but yeah, so four ASC, the uh, the team that brought, it was the Finn stack, I think is what, is what it was. Um, and they had, uh, that's kind of like where Jerax and Matumban got their start S- and kind of sad is like after the, you know, the, the, the people who got picked up from there were Matumba man and, and, and Jerax and Trixie didn't really get a lot for it. He just kind of helped bring them up and then, uh, got shit canned. Didn't really have a lot of success for that. So this is him kind of like coming back to pro Dota, um, and seeing if he can be successful, uh, Era is still there. Era, of course, played in the old uh, Fnatic EU squad, um, and I mean they're they're you know fine players together. Era is still absurdly good. I love Era to death. Um, and then we have uh, their old mid player Hani, who took a, a pretty large break after trying to reform Fnatic several times, um, and he's coming back now as a support player instead of a mid. So I don't know if he's transitioned well to the role or if he's just like, oh, I don't want to play mid anymore. I, I can't keep up with all these young kids, so I'll, I'll just pick up support or if there's like a real passion in him for support. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see. I mean, they have they have Sindarin to play like the poverty support and uh, a former mid player to play the kind of like core support, the four. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of see how that how that goes from there. All right. Uh, I was trying to, trying to make sure I didn't miss anything that we had... Uh... We had talked or that we were meant to talk about i guess that i yeah. yeah any other good pro news that you're aware of that we need to touch on before we close this bad boy out no i think, I think it's pretty set as far as uh, as far as these like new teams i feel like a lot of them it's going to take some time for them to really fit together like um club nine is like actually doing pretty decently for almost the first time they were formerly imperial now they're cloud nine imperial aka the reason that you know to play uh or that you knew to play centaur uh as a as a safe laner uh last patch um uh, but you know they're they're doing okay i feel like next major season we're gonna see next major season we're gonna see more uh more team secret next major season we may see as uh the new ninjas and pajamas team actually like coalesce and start getting their shit together um, and same thing with the new Navi. Their their new roster seems okay, but I feel like everything is is way too early right now. Um, one of these teams may get their stuff together in time for the major, uh, the major qualifiers. But I think for the most part, we're really not going to see any of these teams be overwhelmingly successful until um, until then. Like the, I guess that there's no next major season. That's just TI season because there's only three, um, including the major or including TI. So. Maybe we'll see these guys around TI time, but I feel like there's a pretty high probability that they, they're not going to have the time necessary uh, for a lot of these teams that are doing okay in the Star League, league Qualifier to get their stuff together and really make it up for the major. But uh, this may be like kind of the kick in the butt a lot of these teams need. You know, maybe C9 will pull and add Finnum 
and you know tier two tier three will finally you know get all their stuff together with their new sponsor and have the time to actually really like commit and figure everything out but i don't know we'll we'll, we'll kind of see i wouldn't be too surprised to see secret in the next major um but outside of that i feel like everyone else uh in this kind of tier two spot with navi and cloud nine and all that um it's gonna it's gonna be a little while before they're up there yeah uh all right so two final questions before we close this thing out uh, one, any predictions no on uh, who the second direct invite might be to Star Ladder? Uh, I have no idea what the deal with that is, honestly. I'm going to say that they wanted to get, like, OG or EG or something like that, and just both of them were like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Eh. So I feel like there's a pretty good chance they may just invite someone who did well out of the qualifiers if there's mm-hmm. no, like, team that didn't play in the qualifiers that wants to go whatever. Like, maybe they'll just invite DC if they was out to NP. Um, I feel like that wouldn't be an absurd thing for them to do. Uh, they might invite um, Ad Finum, uh, just because they got second at the last major if OG doesn't want to come. Um, we'll see. They, I'm sure they'd want to invite VP because they're the top CIS team and Star Ladder is a CIS tournament. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. We'll We'll see. All right, and then my my yes. last yeah. uh, my last big question. Uh, so yesterday, if the for those of you who have not listened to it, you should tune into the dot p q and a that we do every Tuesday. Uh, when I air actually it airs live every Monday night on Twitch TV forward slash dot p t v. Uh, but we always release the podcast the following day, and uh, they had a guy call in and ask. Uh, Ursi and Roland, of course, the two who don't do the pro show. So I don't know why he wasted his time with those bastards. Uh, but he asked them how they, what they thought uh, the latest immigration policies that President Trump signed uh, might have, uh, or what kind of impact those policies might have on pro Dota as far as NA is concerned. Um, I know Mercy kind of made an offhand comment about, uh, well, you can almost guarantee the next uh, TI is not going to be in America. Um, but I, I was curious what you think. I mean, I, I, we already, I know we've in the past had visa issues, uh, for players getting into the U S in the past. Um, I can only imagine that that's going to drastically increase, uh, you, you know, the difficulty for a lot of teams. Um, I don't think any of the teams, I don't think any of like the big teams that we've talked about in the past have, um, uh, you know, or, or from any of the countries that were specifically kind of targeted by those directives. Yeah. Um, that being said, I, I I suspect that it's still going to contribute to maybe an overall culture of uh, more scrutiny for you know foreign visas. Um, I, I don't know. Any thoughts on any yeah, thoughts to I, share on that? I definitely agree with you on the uh, on the like the cultivation of a culture, which is I guess the same two roots of words. Um, but it's worth noting that as soon as uh, some like actual legal action started happening and the law or the executive order was um, kind of barred from being effective, um, law enforcement was still acting under it, um, and law enforcement was more interested in doing what they thought the executive intended them to do than obeying uh, what the courts were saying. And I think that definitely portrays a tendency for them to just kind of accept whatever kind of like practices or culture is being impressed upon them, even in some cases, if it's just like straight up illegal while there's any, uh, while there's any ambiguity about what they should or or could be doing, um, which is definitely like very chilling. Um, So I I think at the very least, you have to admit that um, even if everything gets reversed, which is very possible, um, the effect is still there, no matter which way you cut it. Um, There was definitely a, a, an intention to limit as much as possible that was completely accepted by the people um, handing out these visas or dealing with any of the like immigration or uh, or customs and any of that. So it's definitely like a willingness for people to completely just shit all over this. Um, and those are the people that, that we need to be accepting our visas. So either way you cut it, uh, it definitely looks bad. And if it, if you, even if the situation didn't change, it definitely illuminated how bad it actually is. Yeah. The, um, the downside to all of this is that the best outcome is still the status, what the status quo as of two weeks ago, right. which still wasn't that great for a lot of teams trying to get visas to get here to compete in, in Dota two tournaments. So yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it definitely leaves something to be desired. I think. Yeah. 
the the main the, the the one comment that I definitely saw that just sort of like resonated with me in terms of what I think will happen is someone said, "Well, guess he is going to Vancouver." And I was like, "I think so. Yeah. That makes sense." So I feel like it'll be in it'll probably be in Canada if I had to guess. Uh, Canada's always like. I, th- I feel like one of the most vocal countries uh, that's just like, give us a fucking esports event, god damn it! <laughs> and uh, to, like, you know, Vancouver is a great city for it. Vancouver is awesome. I love hey, Vancouver. Hey, it's a like you know hop, skip, and a jump away from Seattle anyway. Uh, but I guess that means yeah, it's like two hours or something. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, so I, I guess that means that we need to if we don't, because I, I don't have my passport at the, at the moment, so I need to go. Oh get well, my passport. guess what? No passports anymore. Uh, to go to Canada. Yeah. Oh, that's never on your way. You're fine. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we're going to need, I'm, uh, I'm going to get a passport because uh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to potentially yeah, miss out on the next TI. I think we all probably got to uh, jump on that. But uh, I, I would have pegged you for somebody who already had their passport, you know, just I ready do. to go. Okay. All right. That's yeah. It. Well, I, I mean, I, I only, only because I went to uh, Vancouver once and now I have a passport. Just yeah. great. Um, I doubt yeah, that's, Roland that's, that's has one. Opinion. I'm gonna have to really, go. I'm gonna have to really hop on him, and I'll bet Ursi's got one. He seems like the type too, you know, to be ready. He doesn't. Ursi has never traveled outside of New York. Wow. Uh, okay, we got to talk to the boy. Uh, yeah, you know, like uh, you watch, it's always sunny, right? Oh yeah. So I've he, to it. me, he's like, he's like a very, uh, he's like a very posh Charlie Day. <laughs> yeah. In that, okay. like. He's just like, why would I ever leave New York? Nothing good ever happens outside of New York. Hey, yeah. Every time I leave New York, something bad happens. Like, that's who he is to me. Uh, Even though that's not at all representative of him, that's just like, you know, he's just never been outside. He went to, except for we went to, like, Boston. I think he's been, like, around, around kind of like the Northeastern yeah, states a little bit. the New England bit, area. Oh, yeah, man. He's just like, why? No. And, and, of course, he's been to Seattle because we were there with him. But I yeah. think that was, like, the first time he was on a plane or something. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, all right. We gotta. We're gonna have to correct this. Uh, we're gonna have to make sure he's got his passport. I'm gonna have to hop on getting mine. Uh, make sure we have him in time because yeah. uh, I'm not gonna miss out on another TI. It's too good a time. Yeah, TI is pretty great. Although I know Vancouver's on a. We can still get a lake house. Man, Vancouver is so nice. Have you been there? I have never been. I've never been to Canada. I've, oh, man. I have not Dude, since I, I, I was a this... young young child. I have this picture of. Um, I took a picture of a gargoyle they had there, and the gargoyle had like just these droopy banana tits and i was like what a fucking gargoyle they put out here fucking off the corner of a building just some gargoyle with with some banana boobs it's like what a wild city this is well i look forward to it and uh, i know we've got some folks uh, that listen to the show that are up in vancouver so maybe it'll uh may- hey maybe it'll make it a little easier to meet up with some of the canadian dot peeps out there so i'm um, looking forward to it all right, I, I that's I you know enough uh, on the uh, on the Trump stuff. I don't want to get us bash the fash. I don't want to get us started. Um, uh, but anyway, so I'm gonna do the plugs because that's my job. I think uh, it's yep. defense of the patients dot com is the website at dot p underscore show on Twitter. Twitch dot tv forward slash dot p tv is where you can watch us uh, do all sorts of things. Play Dota two, do the in houses, which are happening tonight. If you're listening to this on Wednesday proper. Uh, hosted by Mr. Grumbo himself, who uh, got mentioned in a, the latest .p review. Um, we'll have to read that at some point, uh, either uh, Friday or uh, sometime next week. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, and of Is course, a review to lead or a re- review to read. Yeah, we've got. Uh, we actually have two reviews uh, that pop well, let's populated do the today. Oh, you know, I feel like I'm probably the best person to read a Grumbo review because I'm the least likely to flame him. Okay, uh, he's not. He's you know he's he's not uh, flamed at all in that review actually. Uh, well, I know that's why I need to be here so we ensure oh, okay. that there's no flaming of okay. the Grumbo <laughs> in my presence. All right, here we go. You ready? Uh, this is. Yep. Uh, I'm just gonna read them both because hell, we we oughta. We got one for four stars. Somebody was finally honest. Uh, I'm gonna read it last. Uh, the let's see, it's better than bad. It's good by Shrek Two on DVD. Five stars. Defense of the Patients is a great podcast that helps me reconcile my emotionally abusive relationship with Dota Two as I live vicariously through the show hosts who are quantifiably better than me at everything. Listen as Cyphus, a pro elite dangerous player with the voice of a radio deity, and Roland, a Red Bull fiend who really should have put his foot down about that chandelier, produce quality shows for Ursinity, a K-pop expert who says like enough to verbally slay any public speaking teacher, and Proud, a fucking great fucking guy who seriously is like cool as shit, okay? Shut up. 
with content <laughs> content show hosts that are as entertaining as they are informative you're bound to become a pasty fanboy who the show hosts are basically required to like even if you play techies defense of the patience come for the content stay for the grumbo <laughs> That's that's real. I love the grumbo. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 good. I like that. That's a good review. Yeah. I remember the chandelier too. That was like one of the only Monday shows I used to listen to, and I was just like, "This is chandelier shit going on," and I really <laughs> wanted to get involved and start a movement, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, that chandelier. I'm glad that we remember the chandelier. We need an update on that, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Of course, it is. Oh yeah, we need to <laughs> announce the uh, the Monday show and the Friday show. Yeah, maybe. yeah, we will. Uh, I figure we. I'll let you guys talk about it on Friday and let people know. And no, know. we're gonna do it right now. Oh, people okay. need advance notice. Okay. What if they don't listen to the Friday show? It's our lowest performing show. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the friday show yeah no i know it's not yeah, I'm on yeah it. yeah i know you're a good guy here you're, you're a cool guy Thank uh you. Anyway, cool as shit shut up i know you do it <laughs> uh yeah monday and friday so uh starting next week uh you'll hear me and roland on friday and you'll hear proudland on monday which means if you like proudland uh you're gonna get an episode friday and then an episode monday so you're gonna get some double proudland goodness and uh, if you're going to miss me and Roland, well, don't, it's okay. Don't worry, baby. We'll be back. Yeah, Just... and you're statistically improbable. Yeah, that's right. We'll be back on Friday. I swear. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to let Roland read the four-star review because he always enjoys uh, reading the reviews that are that are. Is open it flaming honest. me? I always, feel like, I always feel like I'm the one who's the reason we get four stars. No, no. This has more to do with uh, our inability to close the show. In fact, we actually... Okay, I'm going to read it <laughs> <laughs> because we just talked about closing the show. Uh, he said, it's good. Four stars by Tanaden. Best Dota podcast I've found. Educational and entertaining. Overall, I love the consistency and weekly schedule. As a sub 1K MMR trench lord, I especially enjoy the Theorycraft Thursdays in Proudland. Personal pet peeve. Saying you're going to wrap up the show, then continuing to talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> At least the 20 minutes is worth listening to. Production quality is pretty good, but sometimes I feel like the host could stay a little more on point and follow their outline or whatever they're working with. At times it feels like the show hosts have a loose idea of the show topic and expect to wing it. I know that isn't true, he says. Un- not- <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so here's the secret. We wing everything. Everything. Like, literally everything. Every so often, Roland has, like, an idea, but pretty yeah. much, like, at least for this, 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 well, anyway, this, I don't know, even gonna, for Thursday, um, basically, me and Sam are like, yo, we need to record, and then we show goes up in discord he says i'm just like what are we doing he's like i don't know and then we just try to think up heroes to play and i was like i hate this hero i play it too much different (laughs) hero um and then we try to come up and then for proudland which is one of the reasons why we're moving things around us so we have more time to like prepare for shit like that but for proudland we're just like yeah we're just gonna do like this and like the last proudland we had no preparation we're just like uh (laughs) we'll just uh, we'll sh- so he says i know that isn't true because the show is too good for that really sorry for the negatives i love your show <laughs> no you're you're right i mean so i mean we just kind of had like a meeting about uh you know like we're trying to do this thing like full time so like the things we're gonna do to um to get it more like you know four star proof or what have you so I, you know I, we I, definitely right. appreciate the kicks in the butt when we get them yeah i i will say i i do see roland prep for proudland uh from time to time um i i know that he at the very least is brainstorming topics for upcoming episodes things that he thinks he might be able to ask you about and i know more often than not what typically happens is i think he comes to you with an idea and you go no but you know what would be interesting and it usually sparks something um so i'll say that he yeah. i know that there's some uh you know some some work done there and er, old ursi i mean you know you're talking about the man who has a, a a pretty entertaining uh system for tracking the heroes that you guys have played um and uh I, I, there's... definitely do have an ms paint image that we put x's <laughs> over but i mean he's you know he's he's keeping track of it he's trying to make sure that you're doing something fresh and looking for you know things to do there i would say the show that we actually least prepare for is is uh, me and roland because we usually just talk about what we've been doing well, it's in a Dota. freeform show yeah that's true that's true so uh yeah, all right I'm, I'm just saying i feel like the most prep that that goes into anything is sam trying to figure out what kind of pretend podcast we're going to be at the beginning <laughs> of the thursday show. hey that's prep work damn it that in that in Roland preparing for Proudland, uh, Roland does do it does do a lot for Proudland. I don't oh. want to undersell that. I just get a pass because I'm just like, hey, I'll sit here and then you ask me questions and I answer them with the knowledge 
people is that I already have. I, I will say we. I'm a piece of shit. Someone kill me. <laughs> when we first started, we did do we did keep things pretty. We, we tried to we tried to outline what we were going to talk about. I I actually we we always have had whiteboards in the studio because Roland's one of those guys. Um, so we would, we would write up show outlines and, you know, make sure we listed all the plugs so we didn't forget anything, but we've done it long enough now that, I, I mean, I guess we feel more comfortable winging it. I mean, I, I don't show up and like panic like I did when we like, were first doing it, uh, you know, that, that maybe we won't have something to talk about. Uh, so I, I guess that, you know, a little behind the scenes there, like we, we've, I think it's more that we've gotten comfortable doing it I, that we, you know, has kind of led to that. My years of procrastination have led me to be an extremely proficient, uh, proficient winger. That's right. Uh, okay, so I know I was doing the plugs. I'm sorry to Naden if you're listening to this. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, hell, I did what you I did what you hate. I, I started plugs, and then we went on for another 20 minutes. Uh, but I yeah. believe I was talking about uh, the in houses. <laughs> which uh, are tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv forward slash dot PTV. Tune in, join up with uh, old Grumbo himself, as you heard here from Shrek 2 on DVD's review. That's right, the Grumbo is why you stay. Uh, they'll be hosting another round of the in-houses, and at the end of every season, we do a couple of gift card giveaways for folks who've participated. Uh, you can find our Sunday team stream, the dot P stream team team stream, is up on the YouTube channel right now. Uh, that's youtube.com forward slash dot PTV one. You can email us questions for the dot P Q and a, uh, we have several banked. I, it does not mean I don't want you to send in questions. We need more questions. We'll always need more questions. Uh, keep them coming. If you haven't heard your question yet on the Q and a, uh, we, I promise we're going to be trying to get to them. And at the end of every show, Ursi and Roland are trying to burn through a few, uh, to wrap it up. So keep those coming. We appreciate them. And they always spark interesting topics, uh, on the Q and a, and sometimes even spark topics on the other shows. Uh, a couple of times that's happened where somebody sent in a question where like, you know what, let's actually, it'd be great to just address on a show. Um, I think that's going to be it. We're on Facebook. We're on all the good social media. Just look for defense of the patients or dot P show. That, that's it. That's good. Right. I did good. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash defense of the patients support the show. Ursi, I'll let him make the announcement, but he's going to be doing something special for all the patrons coming up in February because he loves you guys and Valentine's day and stuff. I think is, is why, right? Isn't he dumb? He's a little dumb. Yeah, he's a little dumb. Is, but, he, a, is, he, a, is he a dumb? He, get, he gets introduced on the Tuesday show as an expert, so I, I, he can't oh. be dumb. He can't be dumb. Oh, no, yeah, no, I've, I've listened to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your guys' your guys' Tuesday shows are going really well, by the way. That's, yeah. Uh, I'm glad that, I'm glad that like, you know, like Sam's doing something that's, like, actually working out for once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, they're a lot of fun, and definitely encourage folks to tune into that. Well, we hope you enjoyed this top pro show. Proud, you do, you do it. Do the honor, sir. Kill it. Put a bullet in it. This has been your morning, evening, nightly, very nightly, very early morning news of the professional Dota 2s and the do's. And goodbye. Goodbye.